Okay, thank you for joining from Israel. Um, I'm just going to look at um, the first Tosos in Masechus Brachos, Mei Masai, and maybe you could start with sharing what um, what has been challenging and gratifying about teaching the Tosos in your experience. Okay, so uh, I would just start by saying the way I see this Tosos and teaching this Tosos is really, first of all, two distinct Tososes. I would break it into two parts. And when teaching it, it's much easier to adjust like that. If you try to do it in one continuous piece, you end up getting lost because there are different parts. There's Tosos and his argument uh, with Rashi about what's wrong with Rashi's shot. And then it gets into the portion of Meini, Rabbeinu Tam's solution versus the other Bali Tosos uh, solution to the proposal of Kriyashma. Um, the part I struggled with, not, you know, the students really struggled with was, um, they really, really struggled with the conceptualization of the Machokas Rabbanan and Rabbi Yehuda in regards to Plag versus Myriv uh, versus uh, Shkia or, or whatever nightfall means. That's a whole nother schmooze. Um, but uh, whatever that would be, Plag versus not Plag, and then how the ramifications come up for Kriyashma and how the ramifications come up for Tarti Vesasri. Uh, where you have conflicting, if you dive in Mincha after Plag, would you be able to dive in uh, Mayrev immediately and rely on the opinion of the Rabbanan? And they were very, they took them, they, even after a couple, like a couple of sessions and a lot of charts and drawing and on the board. And uh, I will put a little caveat. I did teach this over Zoom at the beginning. We switched in middle. So that may have helped the unsettlement, but I think they were just, conceptualizing those times and those framework of times, halachic zaman, and putting them into place, into actuality, they really, really struggled with. So, yeah, it is very confusing for students. Um, I, I wonder if you think that these concepts are particularly hard, or is it more that they just don't know it and they're being introduced to, like, let's say they learned the whole fourth parak before they came to this. So would, is, it, is it actually hard or is it that they're trying to learn like sort of like a medium complex sugya from elsewhere while they're learning the tosos? So I, I thought about that and I, I did something to try to combat that. I gave almost a full class on Rabbi Huda and Rabbanan as its own entity. Because, uh, you know, the greatest, uh, there's one something I picked up, a sentence that sticks out in one, you know, in one of the classes uh, throughout my tenure here has been um, the greatest uh, predictor for reading comprehension will be prior knowledge. So, yeah, jumping into, you know, something brand new and trying to, but I think, so I think it's definitely part of it. I did try to offset it, but I do think also the, the conceptualization, I'm tripping on that word, uh, is, is, uh, is kind of difficult as well of that yeah. abstract, totally abstract idea as time as a physical reality uh, is kind of difficult for him. Right, right. I'm just curious, but also before we get to the this problem, what about the question, the four questions of Tosos? How did that go? So that actually went well. I did this actually with different groups. With some of the groups, we actually got to the stage of trying to address them of maybe how all of them are not actually questions on Rashi how they all kind of stem from one disconnect between, you know, of an overview of how Rashi understood, uh, Tosis understood Rashi versus maybe what Rashi actually meant, which is beautiful. That was a beautiful session. Um, some of them, we just left it with the questions and moved on, but that was, that was all, that was much, much easier. So they say you divide into two Tosis in the first part of Tosis goes much smoother. It's really when you hit Rabbeinu Tom and, and that's where it gets a lot more difficult. So thank you for sharing all that. I just want to make a couple of suggestions. First of all, I, I've had um, experiences where the first questions of Tosos were also complicated to teach. And what I really um, have done, have found helpful and have really encouraged others to do is um, is to hold off on this Tosos when you're up to Daf Beis and to first learn through Daf Hay. Um, because every single thing that Tosos quotes is coming up. Um, and I actually find that, first of all, it's very difficult to explain the questions without learning those sugyos beforehand. The questions are a little bit less meaningful if you're not familiar with it already. And it also it also takes a little bit of the, the excitement out of the new sugyos because you've sort of gave them a, given them a lot of the upcoming sugyos. 
um, when you do it at the end, it's almost like a, it's almost like a culmination of the whole uh, sugi of base through hay, because <clears throat> almost every big issue that's discussed on base through hay comes back into the tosos. So um, you know, you know, one question is about kriyashma um, lamita, um, which is dav samach, but also that sugi dav samach is the right time to teach yeah, it be with dav hay. When you learn yeah. some, uh, Kriyat yeah. Second question is about Birchos Kriyat Shema, which is a Mishnah later on, but the Gemara quotes it on Daf Beis itself later uh, lower on the Daf. So um, they'll be familiar with this Mishnah because the Mishnah is actually quoted on Daf Beis. Um, the third question about Kriyat Shema Lamita and the Mazikin uh, Daf Hey, and then the, the last question is Smicha School Lotzvila, which is a uh, large sugya on Daf Dalid, and then even Tosus is quoting like Rishon and Levi. Um, and uh, Rav Yochanan, which is once you've learned that, you're familiar with these people, but you're um, sort of integrating all these sugyos from later on into Tosos's questions. Like you said, the best part of learning these four questions is to, is to think about how Rashi might respond to these. Are, are there obvious answers? Um, which is much easier when you actually understood those sugyos versus just um, being introduced to them through the lens of Tosos. Um, so that's like my first uh, my first tip. I have a follow-up question. Can I ask a follow-up yes. question on that? Yes. Let's say you're in a school which doesn't plan on going to set uh, Dafe straight. You're in a school that, you know, the curriculum is that they jump a little bit. They move from here to there. So, so um, I mean, I think that the question is going to be, like, like, if you're doing, you know, what, what what's the what's the overall plan of skipping? And, you know, where, where, where are you going? So if you're learning just this... You know, you might want to do some of these questions. If you're not going to learn Daf Dalad and Daf Hay, maybe this is a good time to at least give them a little bit of a taste of it. I teach in a school where we do skip, but we skip two all these. So if you're learning the first parak for like a, a month or two or more, you're going to want to hit Smicha School of Tefillah, Birchus Kriyash Malamitza. These are the most fundamental. If you're learning just Daf Bays, um, so then maybe I would do some of these questions and use this as an opportunity to expose them to those topics. Um, Maybe I would choose some of those questions to focus on and not all of them. Uh, it's a good point. Um, okay, so I was just thinking you could you could just take them as pieces. Like here's the Gemara. Let's study this these Gemaras independently, and then see those. You can yeah. kind of supplement like that. Yeah, of course it will be it will be uh, quicker to learn those Gemaras. Like you might just say like we'll learn those excerpts like like this Mishnah and then Daf Dalad and Daf Hey and then do the Tosos as as a summary. But yes, if you're not going to get to those sugyos, I would do them through learning the tosos. If you're going to learn the tosos, um, then, 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 and then um, I think this is really key when tosos brings up the answer, bringing in Rabbi Huda, The first question you have to ask is like, where did Rabbi Huda come from? Like, why are we coming to um, the fourth parak? And what's the fourth parak about versus the first parak? And uh, you know, who are all these people? So, um, yeah, this is disorienting. I'm not going to say they have to learn through the fourth parak before you learn the tosos, but you definitely have to say like, 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 like you said you would do, like you did, um, and maybe it'd be better if it wasn't Zoom or maybe if it was two days versus one day. But let's look at what Dalit da, parak Dalit is about and compare parak Dalit to parak uh, Aleph. Um, and by the way, as an aside, there's a tosos on the bottom of this page which is like very short, but. Um, I think it's worthwhile. The second Tosos. I love that one. I love that Tosos. Yeah. I went to town on that Tosos. Yes, yes, exactly. So that Tosos really brings you to Perak Dalit and Perak uh, Aleph. And, um, you know, within the Gemara, um, um, you know, starting with Ma'ema side with the night, I always compare it to the first Perak, uh, first Mishnah and the fourth Perak, where they start with Phil Sashachar. And why is why is Tfila starting with Shachris and um, Kriyashma Arvis? And the Gemara doesn't ask this question in, in Parak Dalad. So uh, getting a familiar, familiarity with the fourth Parak and Rabbi Huda and Chachamim and the Da'av Kamar Avad, um, uh, you know, they need it. I do think that if you learn the, the list Netosos and you learn this whole Gemara and you're doing this whole at the very end, by that time, they might have gotten like a little bit more of an understanding of Rabbi Huda and Chachamim. But 
once you understand the Machlokas and the Da'ava Kamar Avad, so then you'll have a chance at understanding this answer of Tosos. Um, when you say Da'avid Kamar Avad, how deep do you get into that whole Machlokas or Shonim? What that means? Does that mean forever? Does that mean today, tomorrow, a week, a month? I don't think it's necessary for this Tosos. It's an important topic by itself, right? Right. But, um, you know, um, yes. If you want to go I, Halacha Lamaisa, it gets very important. Yes. I actually have like a little unit in my workbook on the Halacha Lamaisa, making early Shabbos and the Tarti de Sasre. But I don't always get to it because sometimes by the time I'm finished with this Tosos, I feel like it's too much. So so it, 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 it's definitely important. Um, it's just a question of like how much could you cover, but you know it's definitely meaningful and important enough to cover. Um, I just wanted to say over here, yeah. I mean, I don't have a. I think that they have to understand this concept of like the suffix and the machlokas uh, of Rabbi Huda Chachamim in order to understand the tosos a hundred percent. So that has to come first, and it is a little bit difficult. Um, you know, you, you spoke about dividing the tosos up into two. So I don't know. I think I think you might want to consider like ten because there's a lot of pieces. There's like the four questions. There's Rabbi Tom's answer. Then there's the question of um Kasha uh, I think it's Kule, Um that 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 it's a stira. So and then he explain Tosos explains it and then gets to the re. So I think that a big question with this Tosos is even if you're taking it on, which is very challenging, Tosos, like how much of it are you gonna actually do and where's your stopping point in the Tosos? So here's one that I've done after the Reese question. I, I do think that if you're gonna do Rebbe the Tom, it's, which seems like a stretch, it's worthwhile to show them that the Re doesn't like it because of the exact reason. Um, um, I actually kind of burned out around here. I mean, not me personally, but the class burned out at this point. And as much as I'd love to continue, I couldn't finish the whole doses. Yeah, well, I don't think you should beat yourself up or your students up about that. I think this is a great <laughs> place to stop. Um, after the after the Reese question, or you know, even um, bef- I mean, the Reese spells it out, but even just like the beginning where he says "tre kule de and just stop right there um, to show that the re has an issue with it, and he goes on to another answer. You don't necessarily need to learn the re or the Reese explanation about why it's a steerer because it's sort of obvious once he starts saying it, or go to here. Al King of Marie said, you know, the re fully rejects her the time and gives his own answer. And then you can stop here. So, um, you know, the re himself, yeah, I think I think it's like a you I think that it's a huge toast source. It's really important. It's really comprehensive. It really brings together all the sugars of the parak, but it might be too much for your class to do the entire thing. So this is where I've stopped a lot. Like if I, if I teach like a ninth grade um above average class. Still, like I would stop here. Um, otherwise, the entire um, you know semester will be this tosos. The the reason answer is not so hard, but it involves knowing base on a base. So, um, if you do base on a base, then you could do the re. I personally, like I said before, I focus on duck base and then gimel dalit and hey, and I don't focus on base on base. Um, nothing wrong with base on base, just like you can't do everything, so that you have to choose something to leave out. So if you did base on base, the re would be a great um, rehash of base on base. If you didn't do base on base, I would just leave out the re. Um, I don't think it's as important for halacha, for 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 conceptualization, for meaning. It, it, it's a good answer, but it, they can do without it. And then the end of the tosos is actually very difficult. We don't need to go through it right now, but. Um, it's actually a very difficult toast. So if you're doing like the highest 12th grade class, it might be really fun to try to work it out um, and figure out what exactly he means at the end, where he's trying to be Miyashi with the Yerushalmi. But in, in a more basic class, I would definitely leave out the end and I would be inclined to leave, leave out the re. I love the questions of Tosos and Rabbi Tom's answer. I think that the Tarati de Sasri is difficult, but it's really important in terms of Lamdas and Halach Lamaisa. And... Um, just sort of like stop in the right place and do it after the students are prepared. And it's like, it's sort of like a, to me, it's like a culmination um, of, of, of the, of the signal. It's the end of the unit. It's the end of the yeah. unit. It's based, based on, hey, and then the Tosos, and that's like a lot. And then the re- if, if you're going on in the first parak, 
they're really different topics that are coming up. So this is like a, a culmination, but it, it does take, I don't remember exactly how long it took, but at least a quarter of the year to get to that. Right. Um, I have another question that, then this is something I felt like I noticed. I taught this with, uh, we were doing the whole high school was doing Brachos that year. Again, COVID, it just kind of made things easier for teachers and whatever. But um, I did this with some, let's say my 12th grade honors, you know, top level boys who can read, who can translate. And I also did it with some 10th grade girls who can't read the Tosas at all. So like, how do you adjust for like, like, again, I'm a natural, I'm a yeshiva guy. I'm a, I'm a learner. I'm a reader. I, I, I don't struggle with text, but it, kind of adjusting to the fact that on top of everything we spoke about, all the prior knowledge, all the pieces, they're expanding, expanding, uh, some brain power on just the basic trying to comprehend the words and trying to break it down the reading or for Tosa, should we just ignore it? It's a, it's a great question. It's really about like, you say like you're a shiver guy, you're used to the language. So then when you get used to teaching, you get used to seeing like how the students see it and what, what their exact skill level is at. So um, I, I've taught this to weaker students and I've done just Rashi and not Toso. And as you see, I love the Toso, so it's really hard to like ignore it. But um, just the Rashi um, itself is very rich and meaningful. Um, so Rashi... Uh, you know, but Rashi is bringing up the issue of the Minhag Olam is against the Halacha and how is he and he gives a, he gives an idea, and then the, the first paragraph of Kriyashma is really enough to be Yotzei Mikaradin. Like that itself, you know. By the way, that Rashi, you don't need to wait till the end of Daf Hey. You can do that right at the beginning, but and then you can come back to Tosos attack on Rashi if you are. So you have to, um, you know, plan your syllabus based on the level of the class. So if just Rashi would be enough. Just do Rashi. Um, if you're if you're talking about um, like you said, like I, your your classes of tenth versus twelfth grade. If your tenth graders are not experienced at reading but are strong conceptually, then I think you could approach the Tosos. Um, maybe not do it all inside. Maybe you read it, and what what I would do is prepare. Let's say like um, your worksheet could just be like a, a chart of four of four boxes for the four questions of Tosos, you can read it, explain it, and then they have to write it down in English. So they conceptualized all four questions and they heard the language, but they didn't spend the time learning how to read each question because then it would take the whole year and it would be worthwhile. You'd rather do text, let's say, of Gemara itself. So I think that there's like different paths, either completely, um, either completely skipping Tosos and focusing on Rashi or um doing the tosos semi inside semi outside and you say like you know my goal today if you have a, if you have a strong students who don't have reading skills and you did the four questions outside they could probably do all four in one period and you know and then tomorrow we can get back to like textual skills where i find i think most people find that if you're going to focus on textual skills you rather focus on gemara than tosos you know it, uh, or, 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 another, or another is shown. But I, I think that just basically like preparing the entire unit, seeing like conceptually in your mind how all the pieces fit together, and then breaking it down and figuring out the level of each class is the best way to prepare it for the, for the class.